Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Dion Filmer, the director of the research department, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today, both those of you in the room and the many followers we have online, which we can't actually see in the room, but, but I'm told that you are there, so <laughs> welcome. Um, I'm not going to say very much. I just want to say one thing, um, which is that today is the first day of a two-part conference. Today we'll be we're hosting this in Washington, D.C., and on uh, June 23rd and 26th will be part two of this conference, which our colleagues from UNCTAD will be hosting uh, in Geneva. Um, my only role here today is to introduce our senior vice president and chief economist here at the World Bank, Ian McGill, who actually needs no introduction. He's a... Uh, um, our dear leader, uh, <laughs> uh, has had a, 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 a long career here at the World Bank, then left the World Bank, was a professor at Duke University, and then rejoined us here. Uh, and um, welcome, Intermit. So I'm a failed academic, that's what he's saying. No. Yeah. <laughs> I try to be an academic several times, it hasn't worked out, so I keep coming back over here. Like a bad habit, some people say. Okay, uh, so first, thank you, Dion. Uh, and a special thanks to Key for uh, for asking me to participate in this workshop. And I would have liked to actually have participated in this workshop because this is a very important topic for the world and the World Bank Group. Uh, but I know that I'll have to leave sometime around 10, so I'm going to go sit there and I try to listen as much as I can. Uh, so I looked at the workshop website and I saw that since 2015, so almost eight years, the World Bank and UNCTAD uh, UNCTA, right? I said that right? Okay. Uh, have been collecting new non-tariff non measures data for m many major economies, including the EU, the US, China, and many developing countries. And, and as of now, I understand that 75 importing countries and more than 100 exporting countries are included in the database. So the, 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 this work was made possible by support from the multi-donor Trust Fund, I have to say this because she told me to say it, okay, uh, for trade and development and the strategic research program. And we are very, very grateful for this support. It's very easy to say that because we really are very, very grateful for this. So today, the team is happy to share the fruits of this investment by donors and the labor of UNCTAD and the World Bank with the relaunching of the NTM database and the debut of the accompanying database of the ad valorem equivalent of NTMs. Uh, these databases contribute a lot to policy dialogue and to academic research about how trade policies may affect the trade and welfare, both of developed and developing economies. And trade, by the way, needs all the help it can get because the growth of trade, I understand, was close to 7% a year between 2000 and 2009, and today it's less than half that. So in today's workshop, there will be a discussion of new research on NTMs from our DEC research group experts, as well as, so we will also have policy analysis from our operations colleagues. And the workshop will showcase how research and operation actually work with each other and they rely on each other. And it will show you the good things that can come from this collaboration. So. Uh, Jointly, all the presentations will actually touch upon and cover East Asia, South Asia, MENA, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, and LAC, so which highlights that non-tariff uh, non measures are important for the whole world. So uh, finally, and most importantly, I would like to thank our UNCTAD colleagues, uh, especially Ralph Peters and Alessandro and Alessandro Nishita uh, for uh, being here physically. Uh, uh, um, so I understand, Key, that there will be another workshop, another NTM workshop at the end of June in Geneva, right? Which will feature some of the work that will be presented here, as well as more discussions with top experts and some big shots in Geneva, right? Uh, so I wish you all of the best for this workshop and and I look forward to continuing the collaboration between UNCTAD and the World Bank. I think, I think it's a very important collaboration because I think, I would sort of think that trade is at the same juncture uh, that climate is in the sense that it really does require a big push from organizations like UNCTAD and the World Bank. Just as climate is getting a lot of attention, I think trade is not getting enough attention. Uh, so, so it's really important 
work that you are do do doing, and so I will actually go and sit and listen and uh, hear from Keena. Yep. Thank you. Thank, this is, okay. thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Intermit. Thank you, Dion. Particularly for Dion, that five o'clock in the morning today, I have to write to him to beg him to come. <laughs> so really appreciate all these things. Thank you all for coming for this conference and this workshop. And some of you are here, but more, many others are online from what I understand from other parts of the world as well. It's not just in this area, but there are people darling in from other part of the world. So I really appreciate this. And I will start this workshop by introducing the two databases this workshop is all about. These are the databases on non-tariff measures as well as the Avalorum equivalence estimates of these measures. So brief history. Uh, Untal and World Bank jointly collected NTM data for a broad range of countries starting in 2005 under the leaderships of Ralph Peters and Chad Baum. These two are here today. They are the founding fathers of this NTM uh, database. We won't be able to do all this research, policy analysis without these two great men. So I'm very grateful to them and I'm very happy that they are both here. We'll hear from Ralph and, Peter, uh, and, and, and Chad later. Chad will give us the keynote speech and Ralph will have the last word of this conference. <laughs> so, so I look forward to that. So at that time, uh, before this NTM database was launched, uh, was, was collected, there's only scattered of NTM data out there. Uh, whichever countries that are willing to report to WTO, they collect data, put it in train, and then we have scatter, scatters of countries with NTM data. So in 2015, Ralph and Chad they sit down and design a program with uh, leadership and money and then train the consultant to go to the top 25 importing countries, going through their rules and regulations to codify which are the laws and regulations that affect imports of products from which country. So the raw data is at importer, exporter product level. It's a huge work, task of work that they are doing. And Three years later, in 2018, they collected around 40 countries, importing countries, and we have the first launch of the database at that time. I forgot to bring the book. At that launch, we actually have a book to commemorate, which is the unseen impact of NTMs. I should have brought the book here. So, uh, yeah, so there is a publication out of that launch. As of today, when I last checked, last night, there's 75 importing countries features in the database. So uh, the country coverage is much larger. More than 100 exporting countries at 5,000 products. And some of these countries are revis revisits uh, during this sample period. So we have a little bit of a time series panel for some of these countries. All these NTM data are publicly available through World Bank uh website as well as to, through UNTAD's own website. And on this website, you can see that uh, the summary statistic being reported, coverage and frequency ratios being calculated. They are very, very user friendly. So this is just a screenshot that I, uh, I can find using the WITS website. Here is an example. They cannot hear. Oh. Something is coming, but I'm not hearing. Better now. Do you have Good question. If you have the Somebody needs to mute. I think. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'll continue. So this is a screenshot from Wits uh, showing Canada's uh, NTM measures. So you have coverage ratio, frequency ratio of their imports and exports. 
and then you have uh, we will show you what kind of NTMs measures are there in terms of uh, details, consumption tax, product quality, performance, certifications, and things like that. And then you also have uh, which are the sectors or products that are being impacted by all these NTM. So very detailed data and it's user friendly, it's pretty for you to download to, for, uh, to do country analysis. And then this is the country coverage I can find from UNTAD's website. That if you click on more, you can find the data behind all these things. So as you can see, this world map, a lot of it is blue. So meaning that these are the countries that have already have data available uh, for uh, for NTM. So these are great work here. So based on this NTM data, um, Alessandro and I estimated the ad valorem equivalence, which capture the trade impact trade impact of the presence of NTMs. So the presence of NTM doesn't mean that it affects trade if the NTM is not very restrictive. But certain NTMs are restrictive on certain products for certain countries. And to do this, we estimated the tariff equivalent of NTMs. And we published the paper finally in JIE 2000. Uh, it was just last November, a few months ago. So in that database, we estimate uh, a valorum equivalence with importer, exporter, and products variation. And the average AVE when NTMs are present is about 4.7%, which is slightly higher than the average tariff across countries. And more restrictive NTMs uh, is shown to be negatively correlated to tariffs, suggesting that on average, these two trade policies are substitutes. And the ABE database is also publicly available since the paper is published already. JIE make me make it reproducible. <laughs> so the data is publicly available, but I'm not very high tech. So all that I can do is just upload everything with Unser's help to this data catalog of World Bank where you can find the AVE estimates. One day when I become better in organization, I'll make this more user friendly. But for now, you can just click and download all the AVE estimates. So the usefulness of these databases cannot be understated. Both databases are widely used for both academic and policy research. And the results are used in CEM within the bank for many countries that I'm involved. For example, Uganda, Cote d'Ivoire, East Timor, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, to name a few. And some of the work you'll hear this afternoon are from this country's team that work on the NTM data. And the AVE estimates, even though the paper just published, the working paper version was out there for a long time. According to Google, it's really cited by more than 80 papers. So the impact is uh, the impact is there. So just to show you what we can do using uh, this uh, uh, database for country studies. So this is a frequency and coverage ratio by regions. You can see that uh, different, different regions have different level of coverage and frequency. Normally, the more high income countries have larger coverage and frequency, whereas low income country or low income regions have less coverage. And you can look at it from a country's point of view. And then you can compare across different type of products or different type of measures. This is the case for Colombia. For the CEM, I show that uh, what is the percentage of products is affected by SPS, TBT, and other measures, and compare Colombia to other countries in LAC uh, as well as in LAC as a whole. And based on the AVE estimates, the tariff equivalence of non tariff measures, which capture the restrictiveness of these NTMs, we can compare. Uh, product and by sector according to their tariff as well as a AVEs. You see that a lot of AVEs, uh, restrictive NTMs, are coming, uh, are targeting agricultural sector, which is the most protected sector, less so for manufacturing. So manufacturing has higher tariff, but agriculture sector, uh, food sector in particular, have a lot of AVEs. And we can even compare this for not your own policy, but the market you are exporting to, what we call the market access uh, AVEs. So in this case, Tanzania wants to find out what is the restrictions they are facing in the EU market. So we do a study on based on EU's trade policy. 
uh, imposing on Tanzania and other comparison countries. So you, here you see the EU imposed a lot of uh, restrictive NTMs on consumption goods coming from Tanzania and comparing country, and less so for capital and intermediate goods. So there's a lot of rich analysis can be done on this. And what kind of policy recommendations can we draw out of all these uh, studies? For the case of Colombia, we actually go very specific. We say that uh, the, we have to improve the capacity of the existing authorized ports of entry because this is one of the NTM they put down. They specify that imported products can only go through certain ports but not other. So to improve the uh, access, we suggest that they increase the capacity of the existing ports and authorizing more ports of entry, streamlining, streamlining licensing requirements, uh, particularly rega regarding procedures and harmonization of labouring standards. So the policy recommendation can be very specific. It depends on the country co uh, context. For Cote d'Ivoire, we calculated trade impacts based on the AV estimates. We say that if you reduce, reduce the trade policy restrictiveness in Cote d'Ivoire for their imports, uh, jointly, they will cause import to currently the restrictiveness cost import to reduce by 2% and it's equivalent to 250 million US dollars. So, so the, as I say, the policy recommendation could be very specific. For Bangladesh, we show that these are the products that face restrictions and really hurts the trade between Bangladesh and the neighboring countries. So look ahead, what can we do? Now it's five years um, after the first launch, so eight years after the database is started. What can we do? Uh, wish list. We want more coverage in terms of countries and years, and I believe uh, Ralph will tell us more about this later. And countries for sure. Years is tougher. We have to revisit some countries to collect data to, in, in, to try to build the database into a panel situ uh, database. Right now it's mostly cross-sectional, so there is a wish list. And we want more detailed estimates of trade impact, meaning the AV estimates. I hope somebody out there is willing to do what me and Alessandro did, <laughs> which is to estimate at uh, at just six-digit level with bilateral variation, but we only do it for like a dummy variable for whether NTM is present. Perhaps we can do it in the more specific area, say when SPS is present or when TBT is present, then we'll have more richer impact or when import licensing is the issue. So, and then uh, come to time of crisis, then you see that a lot of countries, when they have their hand bounds due to tariff, they started using NTM as the murky um, protectionism policy. So perhaps we need to have more timely monitoring of NTMs during those times. So that's looking ahead. So for today, today's program, this morning, um, we have two sessions breaking up by a coffee break. The first session will be for my partners in crime. Presenter, presented by Alessandro and um, Enza. Both of them will talk about how to use this database to do academic research um, on, on their area. And then we have a coffee, short coffee break. And then the next session will feature up and rising stars in Deck RG, Lucas, as well as Devaki sitting there. And that uh, both of them will present core author papers with Anna Fernandez. So Anna has kindly agreed to chair the session with no bias. <laughs> and then we'll have a lunch break. Uh, we'll have our founding father, uh, Chad Baum, give the keynote speech. He, he promised to keep it very entertaining so that we have appetite to eat our lunch. And he will chair by the other founding father, which is uh, Ralph. After that, we have, oh, sorry, the schedule is so packed because I actually have so many papers that want to come in that I don't want to turn down people at the end. It is such a long one. Afternoon, the first afternoon session have three papers. This is policy-oriented research uh, presented by our operational colleagues. Uh, and, and Devaki will chair that session talking about uh, NTM in Indonesia in, as well as in Cyprus, Turkish community. After a coffee break, we'll have a new session uh, on new goods trade, which is particularly on green product exports. So this is related to climate change 
agenda that Intermit was talking about. There we have paper by Sol Solimi and myself talking about how trade policy can impact uh, green product exports. And since I know by that time everybody is tired, so I put my paper last, just in case, <laughs> just in case I make mistakes and nobody can catch me. And the last word of the conference will be from Ralph. He will give us the closing remark. Hopefully, that will we can finish everything on time. So for today's presentation, each paper are given thirty minutes equal. Uh, uh, so twenty five minutes for paper presenters. Five minutes for question and answer, both on here as well as online. So we'll keep track of time closely. And without further ado, we'll start the first session. The first presenter is En Zhe Xie. En Zhe is a PhD candidate from Beijing, Peking University. He's visiting us here at the bank to fulfill his uh, degree requir requirement for overseas immersion. For all the potential hiring department out there, university institutions, the like, uh, check him out. He is good, he is smart, intelligent, hardworking, and he's very well trained by me. So <laughs> he's going to talk about joint work with me on the relationship between tariff and non tariff measures. And, and then this next paper will be on Alessandro. So, floor is yours. Come. 